Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Charlotte from At Charlotte's House. I am sitting in our back porch and today I'm gonna to try to build a little something for this space. I am joining forces with my friends over at Remodelaholic and we are doing a two by four challenge. I love an excuse to build. Working with two by fours is a really cost effective, sturdy way to bring in cool furniture. And this porch could use a little something. I recently refreshed it and brought in some new all weather wicker, but I wanted a little something for this space here to replace this rattan chair. I love the rattan, it looks beautiful in pictures, but it's not quite sturdy enough for our family of seven. And I thought that a little day bed would actually be the perfect solution. I wanted some kind of a cushion, and so I actually found two of these floor cushions at World Market. Here are my two by fours. This is my inspiration. This is gonna be one end of my bench and I have already cut my two by fours. I am going to use my Craig jig to make pocket holes and that will hold this whole thing together. If you don't know about a Craig jig, you need to. Essentially with the Craig jig, you have two things to set. You wanna set how deep you're gonna screw it in and then you need to set where you're gonna clamp it and both of those numbers depend on the width of the material. I'm drilling into two by fours, which means the width is actually an inch and a half. Two by four is not a true two inches by four inches. I don't know why. I have this set to one and a half inches and I'm gonna drill my pocket holes on the underside of this so that hopefully you won't notice it. I'm gonna repeat this on the ends of all three of these middle boards and then I can use my Craig screws and put them all together. For a one and a half inch board, I'm using two and a half inch Craig screws. It tells you right on the label what length you need and these are intended for indoor-outdoor just because I know this is gonna be outside. I'm also using a right angle to make sure that when I screw this in, everything's staying square. I'd like my seat to be about 18 inches high, so I need to kind of work backwards. My cushion's four inches, the width of this board is about an inch and a half, so I want the bottom of this board to be about 12 and a half inches from the ground. So I'm gonna line up the boards here, and then I'm gonna again grab that right angle tool just to make sure this is nice and square. Measure twice, cut once. One end of my bench is done. I'm gonna make one more and then I'll show you how to make the seat. I always get a little bit nervous putting things together on camera, but you can see these are the two ends that you saw me make. And then I simply added a cross beam. And again, these are all attached with pocket holes. I figured out a way to use a combination of one by fours and one by sixes so that I didn't have to rip any of those boards down. But essentially, I'm gonna attach those across this way to act as the seat. I think I'm also gonna cut another two by four to put across the middle so I have a little bit of a support beam. I'm using four one by fours along the middle for the seat and then on either end I have a one by six but I need to cut the corner so that it'll fit around that leg. So I've already marked it and then I'm just gonna use a jigsaw to cut it out. To attach the seat slats to the bench, I used wood glue and then I went around the perimeter with my Brad nailer. I want to add some detail to my arms right here and I actually think I'm going to try to weave some rope back and forth just so I have a little bit of texture. I need to route a groove in my armrest so that when I weave that rope back and forth, the rope's not sitting on top of the wood. I want the rope to go down and be flush with the top of the wood. 
I've already set up my router so that I have the edge where I want it to go. And the trick with the router is that it'll burn and smell smoky if you try to route too deeply at once. So I'm gonna do a few shallow passes. Now I'm marking where I'm gonna drill for my rope to go through and I'm making one inch marks. You may be wondering why I am standing up here. I wanna make sure that as I'm drilling, I'm going straight down through this two by four. I have finished the tedious process of sanding and now I'm going to stain this guy. You are witnessing for the first time that I am remembering to wear gloves when I stain. For whatever reason, I usually forget and then I end up with brown hands for the rest of the week. So that's a victory. I'm gonna use Minwax Golden Oak. I use this same stain on something else that's on that porch. I like it because it's actually pretty similar to the rattan that I'm in love with. So I am going to put a coat of stain on, let the stain set, and then I'll start stringing my rope. I finished staining. I've let it set for a little bit, and now I'm hoping that the last part of my plan will work. Now I'm adding the final detail, which I'm a little bit in love with, and it's just some cotton rope. I'm using this 3 16 of an inch rope, and I actually have to confess that I had a bunch left over from a macrame class that I led, and they've all been pre-cut, so this was kind of a happy accident. I decided that it actually was much, much easier for me to do just one rope at a time. So I'm gonna go up through the bottom, down through the top, and I'm trimming the end, and then I'm working with electrical tape, which I like, so I'm ripping off, what is that, five inches? And then, it doesn't have to be neat, I'm just wrapping it around the end. I'm going well past the end of the rope, so that the end of my tape is sort of skinny. And that means that when it comes time to pass it up through the holes that I've drilled, it's a little bit easier to thread. But do you see how all I need is just a little length to grab? And then I'm going back up through this one. And then back down. And that's it. To finish it off, I am just pulling my ropes as tight as I can, and then I'm simply tying a knot. The last step is I am going to trim this rope how much do you think I should trim? I think I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's like giving a haircut. Here is the finished product and I am thrilled. I needed two more seats out here on the porch, but I was worried that a love seat or a pair of chairs would take up too much room when you walked onto the porch. This bench is the perfect solution. It is sturdy, so it can easily fit two or three people. It is made out of two by fours, so it didn't cost very much at all. And I made it with these cushions in mind, so it's also comfortable. And if I need to take the cushions away because it's damp or rainy, I think it looks just as nice, which is a bonus. The last thing that I'm a little bit crazy about is that it's a fairly simple build. There's not a lot of crazy construction that went into it, but adding this rope all of a sudden makes what could have been kind of simple feel very modern and chic and I love it. I use that Minwax Golden Oak stain so it matches the tone on the rattan, it matches the crate cover that I made for the dog crate. I think it fits the porch perfectly. There is a lot going on aesthetically, so this simple wood bench is really just a nice detail to have out here. Thanks so much to Remodelaholic for giving me the kick in the pants to make this. Make sure you go over to her site. She has a playlist of all these other 2x4 projects. There are some amazing ones. Thanks so much for joining me at Charlotte's house. Have a great day, everyone. If you like this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button.